When I first started using Gig Performer with my audio devices, this bottom area of the audio device channels was just massive. And these particular audio device blocks in the rear view were also huge because I have an audio device that has a lot of inputs. It's got, you know, eight analog ins and outs. And in addition to that, it's got two banks of digital inputs and outputs. So the audio device itself was just pretty huge. And I don't really use all of those when I'm performing live. So I only use maybe the first one for a microphone and the second one for a guitar input. So you're going to want to set up your audio device. You'll go to options and choose audio setup. And from here, first of all, you can choose the input and output device. So if you want to use a separate device for both, you can go ahead and select which device you decide you want to use. Now, I also have the channels, the active output and input channels, and that's where you're going to want to think about restricting. So for myself on the device, my universal audio Thunderbolt right now, if I choose it, since I just chose it again, look at that, all of the output channels are automatically enabled. And if I hit OK, it's going to go ahead and add all those channels here on the bottom. You would have seen like 32 output channels. A little difficult to manage if that's not what I want. So as I have it open right here, you can see um, you can choose your active input and output channels. So I've restricted it for myself on my input channels. Uh, you see four of them right up here at the top of the screen on the device. That's because by default, I have A1, A2, A3, and A4, my four main analog inputs. After that, I disable them because I don't necessarily want them to show up. So you can enable and disable and decide what ones show up right there. Now you've also got the ability to adjust the sample rate and your audio buffer size, which quite handily has the round trip latency right next to it. So as you're choosing your audio buffer size, you can see what effect it's going to have on your computer latency. Keep in mind that even though you go for the lower latency number, that's going to be coupled with more processor load. So you're going to want to keep an eye on that CPU meter. So yes, we'd all like to have zero or as close to zero latency as we can have, but it's the real world. We have limited computing power. So you're going to want to make sure that your latency is as good as it can get considering the computing hardware you're working with. All right, I'm not going to apply these settings. I don't want to have all those inputs enabled. So there we go. You see my channel one, two, three, and four inputs of my Universal Audio Thunderbolt interface. And you see the outputs down there, virtual one and virtual two, because I'm capturing it virtually with some software. So let's do a little test. I'll get the MIDI blocks out of the way. And let's just drop a reverb in here. So I've got this BX Rooms reverb, a really nice um, you know, reverb. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my channel one, my microphone that I'm talking to you now, uh, through the reverb. So I'm going to connect it to input one and input two because I'm not using two different microphones. And then I can connect the output of this reverb to the output of my audio device. And then instead of hearing the nice, simple uh, voiceover sound you're hearing, you're going to hear it saturated with some reverb. There we go. Wow. It's big in here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to disconnect that. And you can hear as I disconnect the channels one at a time, too. So that's it's as simple as that. If you have an audio channel, you can route it directly to an audio output. So if you want your guitar, let's say I plugged in my guitar on channel two, if, um, if I am using my own guitar pedal and I'm not processing it all, there is no reason why I can't plug channel two directly into the audio output on my audio interface. And that's how I would get it plugged sort of as a pass through. Now, keep in mind, that's not going to let me have a lot of control over the gain and things like that. So um, in order to be able to control the, the volume of it, I might want to start using different blocks that will process volume and stuff like that and give me access to it on the front. But that's basically how to get audio up and running. It's as simple as connecting the input to an output what you do in between that input and output, the different modules and blocks you put in there, is totally up to you.